Hey guys, it's Katie. So, I used, or I made one of these, this owl is a Zuri mold, and it goes to about here. And I decided I'm going to use it for another project. And I think I'm going to do something on this little board here. Um, I don't really know what, but I'm going to do something. And I was like, I just started, you know, adding a little extra piece to make a branch out of, stuff like that. And I was going to edit this branch so it's not swirly. Um, and I was doing it, and I'm like, man, I really should record it. So I'm going to record it. And I'll probably do it in a fast-forwarded version. The owl is fully baked um, already with some scrap color. I want to get put a layer over this tree that's already there so I can add my own texture on the tree. So I just put a little bacon bond down to whatever's already baked. And then I'm going to extend the branch and I think I'm going to put a trunk down here down the side. So for me at least, sculpting takes a long time to get it to what I want to look it to look like. Um, I'm using different kinds of, this is a nail tool, this is a different tool, a little silicone one. Um, I tend to bake in multiple stages where I'll bake a portion that I'm happy with and then again put more bacon bond on. Again I'm going to glue it to a flat surface so it's not like a piece of jewelry that's going to be worn and um, really used like that, you know. So I'll probably speed this up but I'll have to because this will just it takes a long time to get things to look well. I mean when you're doing like those ornaments like little kitty looking things that those can go quick. But when you're trying to sculpt something to look really either realistic, photorealistic, or whatever, just like painting, I mean, it takes me weeks and weeks to do a painting. Um, so I'm pretty much just getting a layer over this that's already there, and then I'll carve in some trunk texture. And yeah, so I'm going to speed this up.
Okay, so as you can see, as you get, like this is baked, it's baked to about here and here, and it's baked till about here. As you get further away from the baked parts, it gets flimsier and harder to work on. So what I'm doing is what I can carve, I'll carve now. What's getting flimsy, what I'll do is I'll just position it where I want it. I'm getting some kind of base, but it's smaller than what I'm planning on it to be, so that way I can add clay on top, just like I did with this that was already baked, and carve it. I'm also thinking I'm going to take another smaller branch and add it out here, and maybe another little one off here, and even potentially one of these has to be longer so either a little branch out here or even make this one longer um, but I need some support because I can't do much when it's all flimsy like this so at this point I'm gonna stop and give it a bake and I do it like this just because it's my personal preference some people tell me why don't you just use your uh, heat gun why didn't you just do this why don't you just do that this is the way I prefer to do it if I use a heat gun and I touch one of these little parts, it would probably snap it. So I'm going to bake it, but not a full hour. I'll bake it for 30 minutes just to get it kind of firm um, at the recommended temperature for whatever clay you're using. I'm going to do 30 minutes, and I'll do 30 minutes whenever I add raw clay to it. I'll, you know, and I'm happy with it. I'm like, I don't want to touch anything, squish anything. 30 minutes. Um, I will do that. The last bake I do, which could be in a week from now, whatever piece of clay goes on last I'll do a full hour so potentially some of these pieces of clay could have four or five hours total um, in the oven but you know at one point they're only getting 30 minutes to start and I may add some little sausages on and blend them out to bulk it up here and there um, I was bulking up right here because that's where it goes from the mold the zuri mold to the raw clay so I was just trying to make sure those attachments are nice and bulked up but it also doesn't look weird and when I hang this obviously it's gonna be hung on the wall so I'm really trying to get detail on the top when you're looking down because you're probably not gonna be looking unless you're like laying on the floor you're probably not gonna be looking under though I may add some texture to this I want to be able to see texture all the way around my piece um, I don't know I just that's what I like and I know I've showed you guys that fairy one I made a long time ago which is actually I did with Sculpey 3 because that's what got me into polymer clay was trying to do stuff like this so I'm gonna bake it and stop talking and stop fudging with it because I can always add more in a little while and these like little bits that are against the board I'm not worried about those I mean yeah you could pick this up try to pick it up or you could get all these off but when it's fully baked I'll just go around with my Dremel and just trim up these back edges which I'll show you later um, oh. and it's not sticking to the wood obviously if I had a tile for this exact size I would just put it on a tile but I want to make sure it's gonna fit to whatever you're gluing it doesn't mean you again someone said the other day I should tell you what I'm making you can put something like this on anything you can put this on a journal cover. You could put this on a piece of cardboard, on a piece of paper. You could put this on a canvas. You could put this on absolutely anything you want, a mirror, whatever, a piece of glass. I just have these little wood pieces from when I was wood burning. So that's what I'm going to make it on. And eventually I'm going to paint this. But there's nothing telling you you couldn't carve something like this and put it on a journal or a photo album or whatever you want, OK? So no, I'm not going to say I'm making a wall hanging because who says I could later glue this onto a, what is this, 8x8 journal if I wanted to, or photo album, you know? So anyways, I'm going to stop talking. So it's out of the oven, and I was doing a little doodling on it, and I was going to put a big branch coming down on top, but I thought with this branch it was going to look weird, so I'm going to have one on top. This one's going to be behind the tree trunk. And I, as I was walking upstairs, I kind of flattened it out. I also made marks where I can line up certain marker points so I know where I'm going to position this. So I made a mark on either side of this, and I made a mark on either side of this, and then right here at this hook so I know where 
each time I want to set it down because I'm eventually, like I said, going to paint this background. What's nice about putting it on wood is that I can bake it right on here. So I don't have to put the only tile I have that's bigger than these little four by four tiles is the one I the mat one I work on. And people have asked me about this. I got this for my brother in law. He does construction and he had some scrap ones that I told him to keep an eye out. Um, so you don't need a beautiful one. If, even if it was kind of broken in a corner, you could use it. The only reason why I took this from it is it's matte and the glossy um, glass surface I had reflects my light right above really when I'm doing videos. Otherwise, I'd just be working on the glass um, thing down here. I would just be working on that and that's what I did before I started videos. Anyways, so I'm going to continue on with this. I drew, I think I'm going to bring this branch right off. These I'm going to add little points to. I'll probably put some other little branches. I don't know. I may paint them. I may just put a couple and then paint. You know what I mean? You can do whatever you want. You can, you know, we can have some branches, little ones, and then I can paint and draw in branches that way too. It is going to be mixed media as well. This I'll probably paint over just so it. I don't think, like some people paint with colors and stuff. I don't think I'm going to do that. Um, but I think I'll do something with this. I don't know. We'll decide later. I might paint it black and then just use the metallic waxes because they really stand out on black. But I don't know what I'm doing. So anyways, I'm going to continue on with this. Oh, I do want to say, and I know I've said it before, but I say it at the end and I always forget. If you're going to join my Facebook group, make sure you answer the questions. Just a yes, no, I agree. That way I know you're not like some kind of robot or um, troller trying to get. Because people join groups to get group members info so they can friend request them and stuff. Um, yes, I have people that I'm friends with and that you can become friends with. But if like some weird person starts sending you a personal friend request, it's kind of odd. And I've had that happen to me when I joined other groups. And I'm like, who the hell is this from India that I have no clue and I've never talked to them and why are they friend requesting me? So anyways, just to protect my members, I added questions. You don't need to write a sentence. Just make sure you answer them. Because if you don't put any responses, I hit decline right off. I don't even... I'm sorry. I just don't... Um, I don't want to risk it. I never used to have questions, but... It is what it is. So I'm going to add... When I use this guy, this I have some... Um, I just squirted out up in the corner there some bacon bond. And when you see me get this, is when I'm adding bacon bond. So I'm going to put some... I'm sorry my nose is running um, on the area I want to build this up so I can add texture I'm gonna also add some clay to stick to this and this is pretty you know solid right now I should see I had a gap here I should put um, a little clay in there to bulk it up sorry my nose is running so bad and I was trying not to sniffle because people get moody about when you sniffle <laughs> and I had it actually ran out of my nose, <laughs> onto, my, onto my lip, and I was like, oh no. So I had to pause quick. You know, I am human, and when I'm recording, I'm kind of just recording. I'm not going to wait for a perfect time. A lot of times I'm in my PJs, or when I come down here, people say I'm always, I always wear my bathrobe in the basement, always. I have like five or six of them. Um, as soon as I get home, a bathrobe goes on. Just because my basement, man, it's underground in Vermont. And today was warm. Last week we had some 40 degree days. We even had a little bit of snow. But today it was like 65. And it is May 17th. My basement is 60 degrees. That's usually, it can get up to 65 down here. But because it's underground, it really doesn't get that warm down here. So even in the middle of the summer, coming in from a 70 or 80 degree day, I put my bathrobe on. I get chilly down here. In the winter, it gets down into like 51 because it's not heated down here. I mean, our upstairs is heated and the floor can kind of be warm. Our pipes that heat upstairs run through the ceiling down here because it's all open rafter kind of ceiling. It's an unfinished basement. 
So it's generally cold, so I generally always have my bathrobe on, even if I'm in like shorts and a tank top. I always do just because it's it's chilly, man. It gets cold. You know, and I might not be able to bulk this out all the way right off. I may have to uh, bake it again before I can get the full length that I want. And it's 11.22 uh, p.m. It is still coronavirus time. I'm not working currently. Um, but I'm going to do a little bit more before I go to bed. What I like about doing this stuff is you can bake whenever you know I'm baking it and st I'm baking it in stages but I'm baking it when I'm done for a bit you know I'll work on it for a bit and then I go okay I'm done for now and then I'll bake it and then next time I want to work on it everything's hard and I can yeah see that's I think that'd be too flimsy I want to build that corner nice and sharp um so you know just bake it when you're when you're done working on a piece or when things start getting too hard to handle I guess you know that's the time I would say bake it I'm gonna keep that aside because you start really messing with all this clay and it gets really squishy in your fingers and it makes it really hard to handle it starts getting really soft and this is a bunch of scrap that I just mixed up even I have some even opal in it I don't know if you can see up there. I have some of that opal that I used around Halloween to make those earrings that I didn't make a video on. I just showed you guys them. Um, I don't really use that opal. It's a messy clay. Like in your pasta machine, that stuff gets everywhere. So I don't really use it that often. So I was like, well, it's been sitting in my scrap box for quite a few months now so I was like I might as well just use it for this and so I had one color scrap and then I used up a whole bunch of other scrap clays and made a similar tone to it it's a little darker but it's fine Okay. so again I'm just using any kind of tool you have this is a clay tool that I got on Amazon cheap set of them and this one works really well for making grooves down in there. Now I might have this bulked out too much, but I was planning on dragging it back to get and smearing it up what I already had there to stiffen it up. So you can thin things out once you get it on. And it doesn't need to be in its position. It just... So all I'm doing is, you know, making grooves, making texture, all kinds of little nooks and crannies. And I can go back later and add little sausages and blend them in to kind of make, you know, because it would be round. So I'm trying to make it a little round. It looks weird at first, but once you start getting it going, or once you get it going, it, um, it comes together and it all starts to look like, oh, okay, and I want a lot of texture on this, and that way if I, you know, dry brush it with something, it'll really pick up the texture well. Put a little bacon bun on these. I'm drag some of this clay out onto there. And again, in a second, I'll speed this up. My freaking, so I'm in the basement all the time. Like, I work, you know, 10 hours on the clock, but then you got driving and everything. And I come home and I, you know, eat and come down in the basement. It's where I craft. I have a TV down here and everything. Now, we have two 70-inch TVs upstairs, one in the living room, one in our bedroom, which we don't really use the one in the bedroom often, but... You know, joining my fiance and I, our households to get there when we were first dating, we each had all our own stuff, right? And my, at our parents, because we got together in our early 20s. You know, I was like 21 when I met Josh. Now I'm 31. Um, no, I must have been 22 because we just had our nine year anniversary on the 6th. 
And so we had our own TVs and stuff. My TV was a little, not little, a 40-inch TV. And it just died on me. Great timing during the coronavirus to die. And it's the one I have down here in the basement. And it's not that I'm watching TV all the time, but it is on. I kind of, in my house as a kid, we like grew up with the TV on all the time. Not that we were watching it. It was just kind of background noise. I mean, half the time we didn't even have cable. But it was kind of on, you know. I mean, I remember in like... I remember one place we lived at. My mom wasn't living with us. It was just my dad because my parents got divorced when I was like seven. My dad didn't have a girlfriend at the time. And so it was just my brother, sister, and I and my dad. And we would get home from school. And dad would be working, obviously. And we'd get home around 3.30 off the bus. No. Yeah, 3.30. Guiding Light was always on. And we didn't have cable. So we watched Guiding Light. And then... You know, a lot of times it was like Friends and Seinfeld and then like Wheel of Fortune would come on and the news. Like that's what we had like a routine, Guiding Light. We watched every day after school because that's what was on. But half the times I'm not watching it. I'm just, it's on. I'm just listening to it while I'm crafting. You know, just so I'm not sitting down here in silence. Especially when I have dogs. They bark at every little thing if it's really quiet in the house. So, it died. Luckily, people said, I'm not going to get, you know, like I said, our TVs upstairs are like nice Samsung TVs. I'm just going to get a cheap one, like a $400 TV or something, $300 or something. I don't need a huge TV, but I don't know how much it costs. I haven't bought one in forever. I mean, that one I had nine years. I bought it right before Josh and I started dating, the one I had down here. So it was nine years old, but it still plays sound. The picture just, last week it got dark in one corner, and then it, um, I can still hear the sound, but today it went black. So I gotta go to Walmart tomorrow and get something, I think, while I do my other grocery shopping. Actually, it died on Friday, and it's now Sunday, so I'm been all weekend down here listening to like my audiobook and stuff like that sometimes I do that down here I tend to save my audiobooks for when I'm driving to and from work okay so obviously you get the point I am going to fast forward this up and uh, yeah keep moving with this These little tiny branches right here are so hard to do. They're so little and so sticky. It's like the most ridiculous thing to get a tiny little one on. <laughs> it's hard to bend it. You got to hold it and like bend it. And they're so hard. They're a lot harder than you would think to get these little branches on. I realized that was a little thin right there. From the baked clay to the raw, so I'm gonna bulk that out in a minute. I'm trying to decide what angle I want this guy to go at. This is fun, it's very relaxing. Especially when you have like a mold to start with. I didn't have to make this owl, just making a tree, you know? Well, really, I made the owl mold. I got the owl mold after I made the mold video. I bought a couple of more molds, and this owl one, I think it's called Owl Tales from Zuri. Um, I think her, oh, yeah, I have a package right here. Her website is, uh, this owl one is called Owl Tales. Her website is www.zuri, Z-U-R-I, hyphen, inc, 
dot com. Um, I guess she come she's coming out with some more molds in July. I think. Um, I think every few months she's trying to come up with some more designs. I asked her if she could do a fox. I like foxes and owls. So we'll see what she's coming up with next time. But they're really good quality molds. I mean, I made that video, so you guys can see them all in there. But um, I made the mold and then kind of just because I felt like doing something, you know, I'm always kind of trying to keep my hands busy and especially being home all the time. So I just did the mold. I wasn't planning on doing anything with it. And then I kind of got inspired like, hmm. I wonder what I could do with this, and this is what I'm ending up doing. I have no clue. I just thought, okay, let's build out this tree a little bit. I really didn't have any intentions. I have no idea what I'm going to do after this. I'm not have a clue what I'm going to paint in the background. I don't have a clue what I'm going to do with anything, but we'll work it out as we go. You know, that's the whole fun of it, I think, is going where your mind takes you and allowing your brain to take you where you want it to. Okay, so it's now 11.57. I think I'm done for tonight. I got all this stuff on. You see, I don't know if you kept noticing, but I kept squishing these, and that's why I like to do par bakes on some things because when I'm working somewhere else, I'll squish it. Um, I built this out a little bit more, but it's lower than I, I want it to be because I'll, again, add stuff on top of it. Um, I got my major part of my tree down. And what I was thinking is, right, so this tree, in my mind, is not this wide. What I was envisioning, which you kind of saw maybe saw me making hand motions depending how fast I speed this up is about this wide I'm thinking so I was gonna initially have the peak of the roundness kind of like this is in the middle the highest point uh, right there is in the middle because the tree branches are round right I was gonna put it in the middle and then I realized wait if this tree is wider and it's just off my image then the the point would be here, the high part's going to be over here. So this part's going to be higher than this part, if that makes any sense. Because if this was, if it was round like this, where's the apex? It's way over here. So I'm going to kind of curve it. Now this is my base, so I'm going to again put more on top of it because I want it a little higher so I can add texture to it. And this is all the scrap I have made up so far. And I may at some point need a different I need I may need to make some more scrap and it probably won't be the same color which again is fine if I'm gonna paint this um, and I probably will do black gesso you know eventually I might make a moon or something maybe we could make this like a night scene do a moon or like a sunset type thing not really a sunset but like a deep blue background straighten it up a little bit maybe like a moon up here with some glowing we could try to do and then we highlight him on this side maybe I want him straight fairly like that so I'm just kind of shoving it up under there and again I was trying at one point I was smearing the clay over but I want this branch to look like it's behind the tree coming out from behind so I don't actually want to smear it up I'm gonna make the thing the trunk kind of go there and then I'm gonna have one up here coming off hopefully I can make that look like that I don't know if I is my fairy one still down with one of the trees I made two of these, but one of them, this was the first one I ever made. The other one I sold. Um, but do you see how, like, this one's coming in front? And, like, this one's kind of behind, and this one's in front. Um, 
Some of these are, this is texture paste that we used in the other mixed media. And then the background's oil. I don't know if you can see it. The background's oil. Uh, the stones are polymer clay. These are just little chipboard fairies. And then just some foam stickers. It was just something I was doing to keep busy, and someone saw it and liked it, so I made her one. Hers came out better, obviously, this doing it the second time. Wow, look at the dust on that. Um, going the second time around. Um, hers, I had a big clay rock formation over here, and her tree was much bigger. And I actually hid initials in it, my initials, and then the girl I made it for, because um, someone liked it, and I made it for their daughter. And so I hit her initials in, which I'll probably do, hide my initials in the trunk somewhere. I didn't do it on this one, I don't think. Nope, I didn't do it on this one. So anyways, um, I'll be back in a little bit, and well, tomorrow, after I do all my errands, and uh, we'll work some more on it, I think, and go from there. I'll get it baked again, another 30 minutes at the recommended temperature for whatever clay you're using, and... Uh, that's about it. I think one more thing before I go to bed. I'm going to make an indent in this. I'm going to bulk it up quite a bit more, but I think I want to put like a hollow in this somewhere, which actually I might put one in here. So I'd rather pre-plan it and have it deep enough just in case so I don't have to bulk it too high. I might put a little divot there. You can make divots wherever you want. We could probably put one on the side. Um, I think I want this tree branch. Do I want one coming up, coming out? Maybe more like this. And like that. I'll put a tree branch there on top. So let's put a hollow on the corner here. Like a raccoon hole, you know, or for the squirrels. Oh, it's May, and I don't think I've told you my Bob Ross calendar. Um, once you have a technique down, all you need is a dream in your heart and the desire to put it on canvas. And for those that don't know, I grew up watching Bob Ross. That was kind of the only art other than elementary school that I've ever had, training-wise. And so um, my mom knows I've always loved him and she bought me a calendar and on each calendar every month there's a quote and obviously one of his paintings in the picture but there's a quote and so I've been kind of reading the quotes so once you have a technique down all you need is a dream in your heart and the desire to put it on canvas must have been something he said at one point so we'll make these like uh, in here divots just in case I mean I, I want to make sure it's deep enough down in there just in case I don't need to add 15 layers of clay if I only add a little layer it's gonna be hard to create an indent so I'll just do it now that way I'm sure I have a spot and I can always fill it back in later if I want to. Creating trees are fun because they just, they can look so creepy, they can look fun, they can look inviting, they can look how absolutely ever you want them to look and it's just, you can have all kinds of texture like in her uh, mold they were swirly kind you can have those creepy kinds and, and the nice pleasant trees you know you can have all kinds of trees and it's just it's just fun again make sure you know on your sides you have enough waves just in case you don't want to bulk it out on the side much more um, I probably will bulk out a little bit more but make sure you have enough waviness so that way if you want to build it out you can but if you want it to go in some you really can't once it's there unless you grind it away that's actually kind of cool looking there Let's, well I'll end up leaving that like something broke off just use what you got we could make that jaggedy on the end 
at some point. Okay, bring that in a little bit, just in case I need to go in some. Good and good. Okay, I'll stop. Okay, so last night, right before bed, I took it out of the oven and I did a few more things, but stuff that you saw me do. I just added a little more to the branches because this is already at 30 minutes, even with things sped up. Um, so I added a little more to the branches, which you were seeing me do anyways. Um, I took a sausage or a snake and put it around this guy, which I will do here. And then I took a little piece and kind of bunked it out right here, like, I don't know, a mushroom or something. Just a little, little thing. I don't know what it will be. Um, and I think that was it. So I'm going to continue on. I'm listening to our press release that happens every Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I'm going to continue on uh, building out some texture. And then I need to add a little bit more right here. I think it was too flimsy for me to finish it off all the way. And... Those look fine. So yeah, just working on the big branch now. So I'll do that. Okay, so, you know, I have quite a bit of this tree bark going here. Um, 
I'm going to be continuing the same thing all the way up, and I don't think you need to keep watching that part. So I'll just keep um, smearing a little bacon bond and then layering clay on and then adding texture just the same way I've been doing the whole time. And when something new comes about or I get it done, what I'll do is I'll probably bake it. I keep squishing this down here. I wanted it to look like that branch went inside and I kept squishing it on this bottom part here so once I get the top done or most of it if I can't do the top because I can't hang on and squish it because this isn't a stable enough attachment um, I may bake and that way I can touch this part again so I'm gonna continue doing that off camera but it's the same thing I have been doing okay and then when I get that baked I'll be back okay so I finished, I think I ended where I was working on the bark. So I finished the bark. Um, I finished these branches. What I did do, because it kept moving around on me a little bit, is I put some temporary tabs just to hold it so I could see where to end. And I did one here, a little guy there. And then I did a small one up at the top just so it would stop moving enough to where I know where the branches are supposed to be lined up when these tabs are on the edges. Eventually I'll just, I didn't bake and bond them, so hopefully I'll be able to flick it off. If not, I'll grind it off with my Dremel. So I think this branch is done. This branch is done. Um, I think the main trunk is pretty well done. I did hide my initials right there. K, G. I don't want them to be crazy noticeable. I mean, now that I just pointed them out, you'll notice them. Focus. Why is it not focusing? There we go. Um, yeah, now that I just pointed it out, I don't know if you noticed it when it was laying there. But I added this branch. So I made a sausage, and then I just stuck it underneath and pushed this down on top of it. And I just put in little tick marks for the clay to have some texture. Um... So the next layer I add will stick into something and I got to build this up and yeah, I got to build it up and make it look like a branch. And then I think that will be done for the clay. So what I'll do is I'll take it off and then we'll begin painting the background, but I still need to finish this. And I don't know if you've seen enough, you know, should I not record that or should I record that? I don't really know. So I'm going to record it again in a fast forwarded version, uh, maybe part of it. I don't know. Um, and then we'll move on to starting the background when I feel like it. So.
So I think I've done as much to the branch as I possibly can do because it's getting too flimsy. So I'm going to have to hold it over here while I finish the edge. Um, so again, I'm going to bake it for another short amount of time just to get it be able to do this little end. Did you see that gnat? Dude, the gnats or the little black flies or fruit flies or whatever you want to call it. They're not really fruit flies because they're bigger than that, but they're little gnats. And they bite you and they, when you kill them, there's blood in them. Uh, they swarm you outside right now. It is horrible. My poor dogs, the insides of their ears are all bit up. I don't have many inside, but with this fluorescent light above me, if any are inside, they, I'll see them they'll like land right here. And I'm like, kill you. Did you see it? Just like all of a sudden hit the thing. I'm like, what the hell? So anyways, I think I'm pretty happy with this part. I'm going to finish off this part. And then I'm pretty happy with the trunk and everything. I think that's all pretty much done. Um, yeah, I think this is all done. This is all done. That's all done. So really, I just have to finish that. And then we'll start the background. And at least for this, at this point, I think that's all I'm going to do with clay. So...